In the previous videos for this lecture one on group actions, we introduced the notion of a group action and provided some important examples. We're now in a position where we actually want to prove a very important first result about group actions is that group actions naturally place a partition on side of the G set X. Um, and because there's a partition associated to that is also an equivalence relation. So what is that? So imagine that X is some G set uh, where G, of course, is a group, we define a relation on X where we say two elements, X and Y, are related to each other if there exists some element G in the group such that G acts upon X and gives you Y. So if Y is the image of X with respect to some element acting upon it, then we say X is related to Y. We claim that this relation is, in fact, an equivalence relation, and this is called G equivalence on x there. Uh, the equivalence classes of this relation are called the orbits, sometimes called the g orbits of x, if, in case g is ambiguous in the situation. It's commonly referred to as O sub x, so it's the orbit that contains the element x, like so. So if we can prove that, if we can prove that uh, little twill, twiddle here is an equivalence relation, then it has associated to it a partition, um, that partition we call the orbits of the set X. So let's prove that it's an equivalence relation. So there's three things we have to check. We have to prove that our relation is reflexive, symmetric, and transitive. We'll start with the reflexive here. So take any element inside of the G set X. Well, if you act on it by the identity, you get back X by the identity axiom of a group action. Uh, and therefore, this tells us that X is related to itself. So the relation is in fact reflexive. Let's now check for symmetry. Let's take two elements inside the G set, X and Y, such that X is related to Y. Well, by definition of our relationship, we have that there exists some group element G so that G acts upon X and produces Y. We then want to reverse this process. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going, since G is in fact a group, G inverse belongs to G and it can act upon any element of X. In particular, G inverse can act upon Y. Well, what happens there? Well, by assumption, Y can be, so to speak, factored as G acting on X, like so. So G inverse, or G inverse dot Y is G inverse dot G dot X. Uh, notice you have two actions happening right here, two elements acting that is to say, well, by the compatibility axiom, uh, we can factor this instead, you know, sort of reassociate it as G inverse G dot X, which of course G inverse times G is the identity. Uh, and then the identity X on X, so that you get X. So notice here that if there's an element that sends X to Y from the group, then there's its inverse will send Y back to X. Now, you, you'll recall when we defined a group action, we only took on two axioms. What we, it says, what does the identity do and what do products do? Now, groups have a third axiom about inverses, but for group actions, we don't need an inverse axiom because, in fact, we can, in, we can infer from the identity and compatibility axioms what inverses have to do. So if one group element does something, the inverse will do the opposite. It'll send everything back to where G sent it. In particular, this then proves that our relationship is symmetric. Uh, so next we have to check transitivity. So let's imagine we have three elements that belong to capital X. We'll call them uh, X, Y, and Z. Let's suppose that X is related to Y and Y is related to Z. So that tells us there exists two elements of the group. We'll call them G and H. So that H acts upon X to produce Y and G acts upon Y to produce Z. So then we're going to claim that the product of G, a G H will send X to Z. And this follows immediately from the compatibility axiom. Since we have the product G H acting on X there, using compatibility, this becomes G acting upon H acting upon X. Well, H acting upon X gives you Y, G acting upon Y gives you Z. And therefore, we get that X is related to Z, thus giving us the transitivity axiom. Uh, and so in particular, we've now shown that this relationship is an equivalence relation. It gives a partition on the G set X, and we call the equivalence classes the orbits.
or the G orbits, again, if we have to specify. So when you look at this proof here, I want you to pay close attention to where the axioms of a group were used and where the axioms of a group action were used to prove all of the three axioms of an equivalence relation. These axioms wonderfully interplay with each other, and it just shows you the rich theory we have when it comes to um, groups, and particularly now group actions. So let's look at one example and compute some orbits of a group action. Um, I'm gonna take a permutation action. Um, I'm gonna take the set one, two, three, four, five. Um, so S5, of course, acts upon that set, but any subgroup of S5 also acts upon that set. So in particular, I'm gonna take the subgroup generated by the, the three cycle one, two, three, and the two cycle four, five. Uh, this is also the product of the two sets. There's the cyclic subgroup generated by one, two, three. There's the cyclic subgroup generated by four, five. So this group is really isomorphic to Z6. It's a cyclic group of order six, uh, but nonetheless, take this group here. How does it act upon the set one, two, three, four, five? Uh, what are the orbits? Let's consider the orbit of the letter one. Where can one go? Well, if you take the number one and you multiply or you act on it by one, two, three, that'll send you to two. So one and two are in the same orbit. Um, if you have the letter one and you act on it by one, three, two, it'll send one to three. And so that's an option. Um, if you take the element four, five, it'll actually leave one fixed. It sends it to itself. Um, one, two, three, and then four, five, it'll send one to two. Um, if you take one, three, two, and four, five, it'll send one to three. Uh, and then I, I skipped the identity, but the identity will send one to itself. Um, so the element one can be sent to itself. It can be sent to two. It can be sent to three. That gives you the equivalence class, the orbit containing one. So the orbit containing one is one, two, three, which is also the orbits containing two and three. And then lastly, what about four? Where can four go? Well, the identity sends four to itself. One, two, three sends four to itself. One, three, two sends four to itself. Four, five will send four to five, as the name suggests. One, two, three, and four, five will send four to five. And then one, three, two, and four, five will send four to five. And that's it. So four goes to itself. It can go to five. Um, and that gives you the orbits for four and the orbits for five. And so that brings us to the end of lecture one for Math 4230, our introduction to group algebra. Thanks for watching. Um, throughout any of the videos in this lecture or through any videos in this entire series, if you have any questions, feel free to post them in the comments below, and I will gladly uh, answer them at my soonest convenience. Uh, so thanks for watching. If you learned anything, give this video a like. And if you want to see more videos like this in the future, uh, please subscribe to the channel. Thanks, everyone. See you next time.